Israel's longest-serving Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, is now the country's first to serve under indictment, and he's doing so defiantly. Tonight, we are witnessing an attempted coup against a Prime Minister, using false accusations and a systematically tainted and biased investigation. After months of consideration, amid feverish political debate, Israel's Attorney General decided to charge the man who appointed him. I made this decision to issue an indictment against him with a heavy heart, but also wholeheartedly, with a feeling of deep commitment to the rule of law and the public interest of Israeli citizens. Mr Netanyahu is facing charges of fraud, bribery and breach of trust. It's alleged he requested and received lavish gifts from Australian businessman James Packer and Hollywood film producer Arnon Milchan, giving Mr Milchan favours in return. In the most serious case, it's claimed the Prime Minister pushed through beneficial laws for Israel's biggest telecommunications company in exchange for positive media coverage. Israelis are already taking to the streets to demonstrate for and against the Prime Minister. It is unheard of, it is unthinkable that the Prime Minister will continue in office while being indicted. I came here to tell Netanyahu he'll never walk alone and all of the fabricators of this ridiculous and terrible coup attempt won't succeed. But after two inconclusive elections this year, Mr Netanyahu's grip on power seems to be weakening and his prized friendships with world leaders eroding. Mr Netanyahu's refusal to stand aside and his party's refusal to dump him as leader were among the factors that prevented a unity government being formed, making an unprecedented third round of elections look likely. If Mr Netanyahu's opponents petition Israel's High Court to remove him, Israel could add a constitutional crisis to its long list of political problems.